So well, it's just... you, you know what doesn't have decades of source material to adapt <laughs> is Star Wars, which brings us to <laughs> Lando, the TV series. So, guys, <laughs> guess what? It was announced, or I, I guess it shouldn't say announced, but uh, it was leaked that Donald Glover and his brother Stephen Glover are going to write Lucasfilm's Lando TV series, just as oh, might the be good. showrunner exited. So I, be I, good. Do love, I do love yeah. Donald Glover. I think that he's, he's very talented. And despite the fact that Solo was a very poor Star Wars movie, I felt like he was really good in it. Um, not as good as Billy Dee, obviously, but uh, no, still, like, like, I, I feel like he, he, did, he did the smart thing. He was just doing a Billy Dee impression, right? Um, so like it, it felt more authentic, uh, and um, then Jonathan Kasdan had to ruin it by saying Lando was a pansexual and he was banging Such his robot <laughs> uh, and all that other stuff. So I, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm wondering if Donald Glover might try to fix that uh, going forward, since he, he's going to have kind of creative control over the show. And uh, I don't think Kathleen Kennedy would tell a black man how to, you know, do a, do a uh, Lando TV show. I mean, maybe, um, but, bro, uh, he, you know, he's well, a super fan. He loves Star Wars. Yeah, but but guys, here's the thing. Star Wars has been on a losing streak for a really yeah. long time. And if everything I'm hearing about the Acolyte is true, like that thing is going to be a huge money loser for, uh, for Lucasfilm, in addition to Indiana Jones and Willow and all that other crap that they've been putting out. So my question is, is do you guys think that this is actually going to turn out to number one be a good star wars show and number two actually like help lucasfilm kind of like recover the star wars brand i'd like to start with uh with you vader what are your thoughts on this because you were um, kind of excited about ahsoka at first but then the yeah. more trailers you saw for it you were like ah this doesn't look it, good i mean yeah i don't know i'd honestly i don't have a whole lot to say about this uh, i don't believe it's ever going to see the light of day i don't think it's i just don't think it's going to happen i, I mean they can they, they announced this thing, I think, a couple years ago. I think the guy that was in charge then is not in charge now. They don't think he's attached to it at all. Um, you, you, you know, and, and they it's just more bluster from from people that are sort of maybe involved. It's like, hey, we wrote a solo show and, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's just I just it's just more nonsense coming out of, of Lucasfilm. I don't believe it's going to happen and I won't believe it until I actually see it on Disney Plus. I guess I mean these streaming shows are they're they're just they're not good they're not good and I don't believe it's going to happen and um, it's just more of the same hey they announce something it doesn't come out and uh, it's just it's just to keep the Star Wars name and brand it's just more to keep it being talked about I think is is what it's all about so I I just don't yeah. think it's going to happen. Well, remember, uh, Ryan Johnson's trilogy is totally happening still. No, no it's never going <laughs> to totally. happen. It, it absolutely is. It absolutely no. will. It's I definitely happening. Yeah. <laughs> Super and Kathleen stereo. Kennedy's, I, listen, um, my informant has not gotten back to me, so I don't oh. know if Kathleen Kennedy's gone yet or not. Oh. So Your deep throat. Yeah. My, 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 deep, my deep informant, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian from the Popcast. So, what do you think of, of, of a Lando TV show? And is it going to be better than what we've been getting from Star Wars TV shows recently? I got to say, man, uh, uh, Donald Glover is awesome. I think he's a yeah. great writer. I think he's super talented. Um, I've been a massive fan of his since freaking Community. Um, I think he's really easy. He's, he's a really talented guy. I've, I, I've even seen the stuff that he's done that I normally wouldn't like, but because he did it it was at the very least entertaining i think um i think if he's actually writing it and he has creative control of it like this might be the first time in a, a tiny spark of excitement has ever actually yeah felt been felt in my veins for star wars since episode eight um i would love to see i will 100 percent watch or at least give it a shot a donald glover uh Star Wars story. So what? That'd be but, great. What is when he's playing Lando? Is he? Is it Donald Glover being Lando, or is it Donald Glover doing a Billy D. Williams impersonation? I mean, honestly, I hope it's the That's, latter. He should do a Billy D. He should, he should do Billy D. Williams. I don't want to see his version <laughs> of it. I want to see the ver I want to see the character. Look, this is not like this is when when, when people go like, oh, well, he's just doing a. Uh, a William Shatner impersonation. Uh -huh. Yeah, bitch, that's the character. 
What do you want? Uh, yes, the original actor that played the character, he set the tone for that character. So if wow. you try to make it your own character, mm-hmm. you're being disrespectful to the character. And what not it bad writing for the character to all of a sudden completely change because some actor decided it be, it, that to be the case? No, it, it, he did a great job in Solo by impersonating Billy D. Williams. So do the same thing. If he's, I think he's a great writer. I think he'll write it really well. And if he sticks with that 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 playbook, that he's going to be cr- acting the character like the character is already established as acting, and not him being his version of it, then we're good. I don't want to see your version of it, bro. I already like the character. I want to know what else he's. I want to know what else he's written. I mean, I've seen him in Community. I thought he was pretty good, but since then, other than the solo stuff, I haven't really followed. This guy, so I don't know well, much he, about him. He did, he did the show called Atlanta on FX. Yeah, so Atlanta. Yeah, that was really good. Praise. And Brian, you brought up a good point too, because I remember when it happened with Harry Potter, where you had the original air, uh, actor, was it Richard Harris, who was Dumbledore. And mm-hmm. my wife is a huge fan of the books, and she loved Richard Harris as Dumbledore because it was much like the character that is presented in the books. Then Michael M- Michael Gambon takes over. He didn't read any of the books. He had no knowledge, so he just made it his own. And people who were fans of the books hated his interpretation of the character because yeah. it not only disrespected the books, but then also disrespected what Richard Harris had started in the original two first two films. Um, right. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Yeah. It's so arrogant too when it, when it, yeah. when an actor's like. You know, I really tried to make this character my own. Fuck you. Why are you doing that? <laughs> it's not your character. Like you're, 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 you, you have a job. You are, you are yeah. given money to, to act as a character that is already established. Mm-hmm. No one said you're allowed to make it your own. And, and as a studio exec, if like if I saw the dailies and some actor is completely act, taking a character out of out of their character, I'd be like, yo, fire that guy. Find me someone to do the character right. Or have them do it right, like that's why these these studios are so mismanaged. Yeah, but the what, people what, at the top are they're, they're, they they treat these actors and these and these these actresses like like they're like they're royalty. There, there's a there's a billion of them. If they can't do the job right, get them one get one that can. Yeah, Brian, Making what, it your own is so arrogant, dude. What about these cases like Jenna Ortega and Wednesday? She oh, took that, Wednesday and made her that her own no she did not because the the way it was written the way wednesday was written was completely different they wanted wednesday to literally I mean, come in and smile at her roommate and have like some like flirtatious will they won't they thing uh-huh. she stopped the production i guess you're right yeah, went into you. the writer's room had them change it and said wednesday wouldn't do that they didn't want to make a season two because they said she was so difficult to work with because she was so strict that the source material matched what she thought of Wednesday, yeah, not she what they were it. writing. She cavilled she it. She cavilled it, bro. Yeah. They, oh, also, in fact, if that, if that wasn't show wasn't so ridiculously successful, <laughs> there would not be a season two. And also, yeah. there's two things. There's two ways. There's two ways to make a character your own. There is you can just completely do your own thing that is completely disconnected from what came before, or you take what came before and then you add to it. And I think what Jenna Ortega did is that she said, here is the basic framework. I'm keeping it, but I am going to make it my own because there are there are things I can do within this framework. It's when actors decide to step outside of that or try to create a brand new framework that the issues ultimately come up. Yeah, remember, we, 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 we never saw Wednesday a, right. as a teenager in high school like that. It's like, no, I'm, I'm listen, I'm with you. I'm just, I'm just trying to throw some examples out there. Like, what about... If, if, dude, if I'm, if I'm watching that and Wednesday about, smiles, I would have just hit. I would just delete it. What about fucking... Chris Pine and Kirk? Did he make Kirk his own, or did he? Yeah, I I believe he did actually. In fact, I think I I think I think the honestly I think the JJ movies get a little of a bad rap. People really didn't like the actors or whatever. The thing is though, like to be fair, these actors went out of their way <clears> to <throat> learn the mannerisms. Learn the speech patterns of the people that they were portraying in these rebooted movies, to the point where J.J. Abrams had to tell, and there, there's there's behind the scenes footage of this, had to tell Christopher P- Chris Pine to tone down the Shatner. <laughs> tone the Shatnerism down. He literally like, you got to tone down the Shatner, man. There's too much Shatner there. He got he got to the point where he was do he was pulling Shatner so much it seemed like a parody, and they had to tone him down. There's something he, on the wing. Right, so he he was trying to emulate the character that came before him. I gotta give Chris Pine props for that. And to be fair, Zachary Quinto did the same thing. He literally yeah. talked Leonard Nimoy for 
for weeks, weeks they went and got lunch together. He tried to emulate him. The movies didn't work out for a lot of people because of a lot of reasons. But I don't think it was the character actors themselves that did it. I think they did right. a pretty damn good yeah, job. Yeah, miscasting is not always it's not going to be their fault, right? But right. Gonna, yeah, yeah, but if an actor's trying, uh, then yeah. Honestly, those characters should not have been recat. Like they should have just gone with like a whole new starship crew or something like that. In my no, opinion, I, anyway. I yeah. agree with but, you one hundred percent. But like but, they were given the job, so. But uh, so, Kyle, Kathleen Kennedy famously stated <clears throat> that there were no books, comic books, or anything source material wise <laughs> that they could pull from to make to make new Star Wars. So, <laughs> what's your what's your opinion on this? Do you think that like, Lucasfilm just keeps going back to the well of already established stuff instead of moving forward? I, when I heard that, I wanted to take my copy of Heir to the Empire and, and smack her with it. Oh, Timothy Zahn? Uh, yep. Dude, he was at Awesome Con one year. I, I just missed Bro. an opportunity to get an autograph from him. That was... That Bro, was so like, some of the Star Wars books are so epic. X-Men I, I mean, series. Dude, I totally I'm understand a... why people love Thrawn so much. One chapter into that yes. book, I'm like, oh, God, I understand. Dude, yeah. I remember when I was a kid reading the Star Wars books, I was like, damn, this is better than the movies, bro. <laughs> like, um, it, they were so good. I, so I heard something a little while ago that apparently nobody reads in Hollywood, and I think that that is very evident from the way that uh, people adapt movies. Like they they take the brief concept of a story and and um, mush it around as much as they really can in a very short amount of time. Especially because uh, in the streaming age, we've got people who are trying to churn a brand new. A TV show or a movie out every five minutes, like the legions of stuff on Hulu or Netflix that I've never heard of before. Um, I like when Crimson much... gets passionate. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> you got you found me when I was rested and caffeinated. Um, <laughs> right. The stuff that's out there um, doesn't have time to percolate or to really gestate. They they are just taking a glance at a book and they are shorting it out there as quickly as possible. Now, granted, Kennedy was an absolute moron when she said that particular line. Just even if you don't like uh, the extended universe, even if you don't like a good portion, and, and there are plenty of books to not like, um, some of them generally are trash, but to say that there's nothing there to build off of, there is so much potential. Just even if you took just the characters, you didn't take the... Um, uh, you didn't actually take the, the plot lines or anything. You don't even have to touch Thrawn in order to have a very successful sequel trilogy. And I swear to God, Crimson, when, when when Episode Seven came out, I could I I swore on a stack of Bibles that uh, Daisy Ridley and uh, what's his name was going to be Jaken and Jaina. I I can't blame you for thinking that. Um, you you had, I mean, plenty of uh, plenty of that. Twenty five books well, to pull from, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> hundreds of books to pull from. Yeah. Um, I, I, only, I only read 20 of them, so. <laughs> uh, you, you read more than I have, to be honest. But um, no, to, to say that there is so little to build off of is the height of laziness. Um, and, and unfortunately is the core problem of so many adaptations these days. You've got the material there, but people don't want the story. They don't want the lessons. They don't want the themes. They want the brand name very much like when Elon bought Twitter, apparently, uh, to <laughs> cycle back to that. X. We've gone full. Sir. I don't care. I'm calling it Twitter. Um, they call 10, it Star bro. Wars X. 10. <laughs> Shithead. It's shit. <laughs> Poop emoji. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, Ken well, Kennedy doesn't know what she's talking about. Right now. Kyle, let me ask you this. So like we have a situation here with the upcoming Ahsoka show where basically they took the Thrawn trilogy, the original books that kicked off the Star Wars extended universe in novel format, and they've replaced Luke with Ahsoka, essentially. Like this is basically Thrawn's trilogy, but with different characters. What are your thoughts on that? I haven't read through all those books yet, but I feel so much sympathy for Timothy Zahn right now. This must be like watching your child mm -hmm. in like one of those old uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle uh, death traps where you're like, you, they're, they're tied to a saw going towards a sawmill or something. Um, and he's not, he's not even getting paid for it, bro. Right? Um, that, that's the crappy part. Like he's, he's not even getting any love for it. 
like personally i've been done with star wars for so long at this point i i have like nothing in this i have no faith that this is going to be good if dan if um, donald glover is actually writing the uh, the lando show and he actually is passionate maybe it has a chance i i won't uh try to judge it until it's out but if you ask me am i excited about any of this stuff hell no i i've been so done with so much of this for so long it's just routine disappointment after routine disappointment it's becoming tiresome i would much rather just step back and and let this all be done with let the let the burning ship sink to the ocean while i'm still on the beach <laughs> hey guys if you could do me a quick favor, if you like this episode and it tickles your fancy or any other episode that we've done in the past, uh, share it on social media and tag us in that post so that we know you're talking about us and we will immediately jump onto that app and we will respond to your tag and uh, we can talk about what you like about the episode and possibly talk about something that we might want to cover in the future. And we would love to bring you in in our community. We have a wonderful Discord app as well. There's a bunch of people in there that just love chatting with us. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So if you like this podcast, tag us in that post and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you guys so much. Back to the podcast. So <clears throat> I want to throw this to Odin. Odin, ever since they Lucasfilm has pivoted from Star Wars movies to Star Wars TV shows, I feel like the Star Wars TV shows have done far more brand damage than the movies at this point because they just keep churning out these shows that are getting worse and worse and worse and more and more political and fans are just getting tired of them to the point where like they don't care about the movies they don't care about new tv shows and they keep going back to these older legacy characters that people are like we want to move on from these we want to preserve these characters in amber the way that we love them and remember them and we want to move on but lucasfilm just refuses to do that so what are your thoughts on the brand damage that these disney plus star wars tv shows have done Oh, I mean, yeah, it's the same thing that's what's going on with, with Marvel, too, right? The movies have done so much damage, but the shows ultimately have done even even more. Uh, and just the fact that they try to tell audiences, oh, yeah, you have to watch these shows just to understand everything going on in the film, that in and of itself kind of does that that type of damage. And I honestly, I look at this series, uh, the Lando series and everything they have planned, and you know, we were talking earlier about how, you know, they, they are likely, you know, they've been losing money on these movies, but pretty much everything they've put on streaming has been for a loss, right? Because, I mean, how do you quantify the number of new subscribers you get for a show or how many subscribers you keep for a show? It's, it's, it's almost, it's really impossible to do that. And well, so no, it's impossible because they won't share the numbers, which exactly. is why they're striking in the first exactly. place. Exactly. Yes. And so, but what we do know is based on the numbers that we do have access to is that people are not watching them and the ones that are don't really love them in, in any degree whatsoever. And so I think no matter what they do with this show, it's going to be dead in the water. And then also I, I you know, I don't know too much about the writing skills of, of, of Donald Glover, but what I do know is the immense power of not just Kathleen Kennedy, but all of the executives at Lucasfilm and the ability that they have to have control over these stories. Because even when you've had, whether it be in Marvel or in Star Wars, you have people that are, you know, even somewhat competent or at least have some good properties to their name. It doesn't mean anything. You know, let's go back to Marvel, you know, big picture. You know, people said, oh, Sam Raimi is directing a Doctor Strange movie. Oh, man. Well, guess what? How much power did he actually probably have in that film? Probably as much as he did, you know, with Spider-Man 3. And we all know how Spider-Man 3 ended up, right? And so I think that when you look at what Donald Grell, you know, he might be there. He might be writing it. But it doesn't matter what his identi identity is. It's either going to be on the brand, which has been a terrible, you know, again, whatever they've decided the brand is at this point is clearly not connecting with fans. So it's either going to stay on brand or just like what's happened with almost every other Star Wars property, you're going to see a lot of turnaround. This show in and of itself, the fact that he's already on because they've lost somebody, this is quintessential Lucasfilm under Kathleen Kennedy, is, oh wait, you're going to have how many writers, how many directors that you're going to kind of cipher through before you finally get someone there, when you finally do, guess what, you're still going to produce crap. So it's just not going to end well. Yeah, and if just half the rumors about the chaos behind the making of the Acolytes is true, like that's going to be a disaster. Like they've already mm -hmm. spent, what, like $200 million on that 
the first season of that wow. show. Yeah. And and apparently it's such a mess that like they don't know if they can actually salvage it and do like a an actual like TV series. But Odin, you, you actually you know you touched on Marvel as well, mm-hmm. and it kind of strikes me because like the next big Marvel release is the Marvels. And if you haven't been watching the Disney Plus series, you don't know who um, two of those characters in that show are, mm-hmm. right? So it, it's it's kind of like how, you know, at what point does somebody sit down and say like, hey, we need to look at this holistically and we need to figure out how to bring audiences along like a single um, story thread as opposed to forcing them to watch all these terrible TV shows because Marvel's TV shows have been garbage. Yeah, like as trash. bad as Star Wars has been, Marvel has been even worse. Oh yeah, and the only way that can ever happen is you clean house, and the chances of that happening with the powerful executives that are the ones in, that are in question here is just not very likely, or it would be incredibly difficult for them to do. But unless you were to just clean house of anyone who's in charge of things, you know, Kevin Feige again, try getting rid of him. Um, and you know, when it comes to Kathy Kennedy Lucasfilm, obviously there's the rumors that she might be retiring, who knows, but what we can gather is that it's going to be difficult because you'll have to essentially clear out all of these top executives who are making these decisions, especially anyone in that creative space and bring in people that you can actually trust. And that's a difficult thing to do in today's market. Mm -hmm. Let, let, Let me, let me throw this out to the panel in general, because Solo, a Star Wars story was the first Star Wars movie to actually like lose money, right? Like it, it bombed. And so the idea here where Kathleen Kennedy is like, hey, let's take our worst performing Star Wars movie, take a character from that movie and give them their own TV show. It's almost, it's almost like, you know, Kevin Feige saying like, hey, that Agatha Harkness character, yeah, let's give her her own TV show because people love that character. So I, I just want to ask you, you know, just as a general discussion. Isn't that what they here, did? That's exactly what they did. But yeah. I'm questioning I'm questioning the logic behind it because it's like, yeah, you got Donald Glover, who's a very talented guy, but why not give him like his own corner of the Star Wars universe to play in as opposed to sticking him with a legacy character that nobody really wants to see like this version of, of the character mm-hmm. of and giving him his own show. <coughs> Anybody have anything to say about that? No, no, no. I, I think you're right. Um, especially how talented he is, like, if he wasn't, if he wasn't like a very talented person, and like, well, you know what, just uh, stay with what works. But nothing, nothing they're doing right now that that plays in that legacy has been working. So you have something that's talented like that, like do what you did with with Favreau, and be like, all right, well, make the Mandalorian. But, like, but let him it, let him do whatever he wants. I feel like it's part of a broader issue, right? Because nobody's out there saying like, "Oh, we want a young Lando TV show." I really want to watch that. No. Nobody's out there saying like, "I want a, I want a, a Calrissian, not a Calrissian, a uh, Andor TV show," because I really loved, uh, you know, Andor from Rogue One, right? Like, like they have all these like ca- characters that people love, but for some reason they seem to be focusing on these characters that people aren't really excited about, right? So like, I I almost feel like there needs to be a point to these TV shows other than like, Hey, let's just give a character their own show. Like Obi-Wan because people love you and McGregor as Obi-Wan. Like, why don't we focus on like seminal events in the star Wars universe and have new characters that we can like attach ourselves to in the TV sphere? Yeah. Why are we, why do we keep going to the, these characters that nobody really wants to hear more from? I think part of the problem is that they don't have a story to tell. And that might sound like an obvious comment at first, but because obviously these are all profit driven and they, hey, this is vaguely recognizable. Let's just put this out there. Um, I think the problem is that they have nothing to explore. Um, Lando or any number of characters they could pull, um, they don't have any kind of thematic element. There's no human emotion to really try to explore we're not contemplating the existence of self if one were to get pretentious um there there's so little to really investigate there and and to um quote patrick willems you know there you know these are um uh children's movies about space wizards yeah don't you dare quote patrick h willems on this channel sir i will kick you off (laughs) i hate that can i do it if i'm mocking him Yes, yes, you can. Good. Uh, Willems is a twit. 
So he is. <laughs> um, the, the problem is they, they take that idea and they run with it. It's like, oh, it's allowed to be stupid because it's for a younger audience or something, completely ignoring the fact that you can still have uh, good lessons or uh, some degree of introspection in your show. But that would require them to have a base level of empathy and some exposure to the world outside of whatever small bubble they live in. But I mean, like, if you wanted to salvage Solo, right? Like, at the end of Solo, we got the reveal that Darth Maul is still alive, right? Uh, we got the the Rising Sun or the Red Suns or, like, whatever that criminal organization is. And then you had Kira, right? So you could have done a, a, a Star Wars TV show about that criminal organization and incorporate various characters like Kira and Darth Maul and stuff like that into that TV show. But it's really about the Star Wars underworld as opposed to a specific character. Like to me, that's far more interesting than something like a Lando show. Yeah, but right? what we we got the really cool uh slow motion Vespa chase through Moss <laughs> what, Esber. I mean the Power Rangers Vespa. <laughs> I remember really cool. that, dude. Oh that was really God. cool. And we got I, uh, I, I remember we when, got when Shane was got, trying to Shane was got, really trying to love it and he was trying to explain how how, how it, that's okay. I mean like, like uh, chain. No. We got wait, we got Boba Fett riding around on a Rancor, man. I mean that's I mean, that, that was right that there. was cool. You can't top that. You can't top that. You're Do you right. remember that the was... child Leia chase? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know what happened to the? Remember when Disney? I remember when Disney bought Star Wars. Right? I was like, oh my God, we're finally gonna get some cool Star Wars movies again. Yeah. And I was so happy. I was so. I was too. I was I felt like such a huge nerd again. This is awesome. They have you know, all the money in the get, world. We're gonna get Raven. We're gonna get, you know, uh Luke and, and the gang are gonna get back together. We're gonna get Mara J. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get all these cool stuff. And we haven't gotten Rain. any of that. <laughs> no, none of it. We haven't gotten any yeah. of it. And the crazy hey. the crazy part is they literally had a roadmap just sitting it right was, there. Uh, so going forward, we're going to say that the Star Wars EU is null and void. It doesn't exist anymore. Why? So therefore, Why all of this that? stuff doesn't matter. And then we're going to go and we're going to pick and choose and we're going to and we, yeah. out of it. You know why they did that? Because they, they didn't want to have to pay the writers that wrote the wrote those yeah, stories. Yeah, in and the first I know place. why. It's just preposterous. And um, hey, I hey. also have a I have a theory that they did it because we never want to see Jackster. In the Star Wars show. Hey, do you so, guys remember when Luke fucking Skywalker sent Baby Yoda <laughs> by himself to Tatooine in the hopes of finding a uh, oh my god, uh, uh, Din Djarin instead of actually delivering it to him himself? Hey, you guys remember when there was a Baby Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> he was busy. I, all right, Luke was. I'm busy. so upset. I, I knew everyone like, liked them, but like the whole time I was like, why is there Baby Yoda? Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? <laughs> I don't care what it says. Stop. Baby Yoda was cute. Hey guys, if you like this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and comment below on your favorite video as well. That goes a long way with helping us boost our channel and get out there in front of more people. And it lets uh, YouTube know that we're doing something right. And if you want to catch us live, we go live two times a week, once on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time and on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So join us there in the chat. We will see you on the live stream. Stay salty.